So, um, this is really awkward. I, I don't really know how to do this. Um, it, it's not you. It's not you, it's, it's me. Ah, oh, okay. I have to break up with you. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Suhani Gandhi here. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please press the subscribe button and the bell icon and also follow me on Instagram because, because I think you should. Anyway, today's video is all about breaking up with your phone. Yes, that is something that we all need to do. Now, most of us don't even realize how dependent and addicted we are to our phones. Yes, addiction is a really strong word, but I think we're pretty close. Our phones are an all-in-one gadget that pretty much has everything we could ever need. It has our music, audiobooks, emails, Google Maps, um, contacts, social media, um, uh, the list just goes on and on. And we've come to a point where it's difficult to function without our phones. Now, you might not think that you're addicted to your phone, but I'm gonna go through five signs um, that may potentially show that you are very dependent on your phone. First one is checking the time and then immediately forgetting. Now, the phone is a useful tool for checking your time. Obviously, it's always with you and it's always very accurate. Um, but as soon as we pick up our phone, uh, we start thinking of other things, we think of our notifications and people who have messaged us and all sorts of thoughts come up and within seconds we've forgotten what the time is. We find it harder to retain information. Um, in this day and age information is not limited, we have an unlimited access to information so our brain isn't really used to retaining so much information. Um, that also makes our attention span really short and that's why sometimes when you check your phone for the time you don't actually remember the time. Number two, your phone is always with you and you can't imagine leaving your house without the phone. Um, this is quite natural because it pretty much has everything on it and if there's an emergency, your phone is the first thing that you want to reach out for. But um, there are also other reasons why we want to leave the house without the phone. It could be to take a picture for social media. Um, it, there could be so many reasons. It could be just if you're bored waiting in the line, you want to check your Instagram, whatever it is. So if you can't imagine leaving the house without your phone, or if you don't have your phone around you to check and you feel that twitching sensation where you want to reach out for something and scroll, then um, unfortunately you take this one as well. Number three, it's the first thing you check before sleeping and the first thing you check when you wake up. Um, I can sort of relate to this, but not completely. Um, sometimes I do go through that phase, usually when I'm tired, usually when I'm having to wake up super early, um, and I need something to give me that kick to wake up or I'm just being lazy. So if I'm not at my best self, I tend to catch myself doing this a lot. Um, but if I'm in a very productive zone and like very disciplined, then I do keep my phone aside and I don't check it straight away and I have my nice morning routine. But if you're consistently bombarding yourself with information before bed and when you wake up, your brain is just not getting any space to think thoughts, you're only reacting. So social media, when you look through it, you're only reacting to things. When you're checking your email, you're only reacting to, reacting to it. So you're not actually creating a space for yourself to make intentions and to think of creative, constructive thoughts. You're not completely in control, you are merely reacting. Number four, you lose track of time when you're browsing. I think we're all guilty of this. Um, Sometimes I just check my phone thinking, oh, I'm just gonna check a few notifications, reply to a message, and then before I know it, I've been on my phone for half an hour doing nothing productive at all, and I've actually taken a break from some important work to do that, um, and that's quite dangerous because we're not in control. We're getting sucked into this world of social media, of this fake dopamine effect, of notifications, and it's messing with your head. If it's your go-to gadget when you're procrastinating, um, I do this a lot. If I'm pushing through something uncomfortable in terms of work and my brain just needs a breather, then I will reach out to my phone, distract myself for a couple of minutes and then get back to work. Um, but there are better ways for your brain to relax in between tough exercises. So for example, if I'm feeling that way, I can stand up and go for a walk. I can grab a glass of water or make myself a hot drink or um, just relax for a few minutes, not do anything. You're not actually allowing your brain to relax when you reach out for your phone. When you're procrastinating, um, if you need a bit of a, a moment, then do something else in between. Don't make it more stressful for your mind. These are five signs that I can tick off and that shows to me that I need to make changes in my life 
to have a healthy relationship with my phone and myself and my life and my work and my social life, basically everything. So let me get on to how many hours I actually spend on the phone in a day and the number is shocking. If you have an iPhone, then you can scroll to the front page and find out for yourself and all the other Android phones will have some similar feature as well. So do check it out. I think it's very important to be aware of of how much time you are spending on the phone. And do comment below the number of hours you spend on the phone every single day, um, because I'd be really interested in hearing and maybe I won't feel so alone in this. <laughs> ah. Okay, so my daily average is six hours and six minutes. Ah, oh, it is such a big number. Why is it so addictive? Uh, there's actually an interesting study by Dr. Greenfield where he compares social media to the world's smallest slot machine. It's like every time we get a notification, um, it's instant gratification for our brain. So it triggers a dopamine release. And that's what makes us feel so good and alive and purposeful because it's a hell of a lot of validation that we're getting. Um, what I believe in is that that validation should come from within and then it stops you from searching externally. But that's easier said than done and now it's become such an integral part of daily life, it's become a habit. The way these apps are wired, it's there to suck us in and it's there for us to sort of feel out of control and feel like we do need it. So it's basically a habit that I need to break. Maybe you need to break as well. You know, these apps might be free, but they're taking up something which is a lot more valuable than any money that they could potentially be charging you. They are taking away your time. And that is so incredibly valuable. That's all we have as human beings. Um, so I feel very strongly about taking control over your time again. It affects our ability to think. We um, have this sort of monkey brain syndrome where our mind is jumping from one thing to the other. Yes, we're used to multitasking and maybe we think that's a good thing, but it's actually taking away our ability to focus on one thing and go into depth on it. I'm gonna take a few steps to change my habits and hopefully reduce my screen time and um, be more in control of it and not have unlimited access to all of these apps. Step number one, I'm actually going to use my alarm clock for setting my alarm. Why does that sound so weird? I don't know. I'm used to setting alarms on my phone and sometimes if I have to wake up super early at like 4.30 or something, I set four separate alarms. And what this does is that you have access to your phone first thing in the morning. And even if we don't check our notifications and apps, even if it is on airplane mode, um, we, it does get our brain thinking. Number two, put your phone somewhere else while you're working. So literally put it in a cupboard um, sort of underneath some things so even if you want to reach out for it you'll think a few times before grabbing your phone and maybe replace it with a book or something else so if you do want to reach out for something you've got a book and you're like okay let me just read one page of that um it sounds very it, do, it does sound a bit tricky but i know you can do it but three, turn off the notifications. Yes, if someone messages us, we don't need to know straight away. Most likely it's probably someone's tagged you in a meme on Instagram or Facebook. It's not important enough to take our attention away from the task we're doing. It just serves as a distraction. So turn those notifications off. Um, perhaps the only notification you might want on is your um, messages and your WhatsApp. Um, depending on the nature of your work. So for me, I know that my agent might message me on WhatsApp or uh, I might get an update about a shoot via email. So I would need to check that as soon as possible. Um, so I, I know certain things are very important for me in terms of my workspace. Number four, post on social media and forget about it. It doesn't matter who's liked it. It doesn't matter how many likes you have. Um, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter, okay? The fact is that you're creating content um, and that's it. You just put it out there and then forget about it. Uh, you don't need those spikes of feeling good every time you get a like or a notification. It doesn't mean anything. Number five, change your settings on your phone. So what I'm going to do is block my apps at 8 p.m. and um, unblock them at 8 a.m. So during those 12 hours, every single app on my phone will be blocked. This means I can't use my phone before bed and I can't use it first thing in the morning. And that is gonna feel like such a relief. I'll have so many other things to do, so many other things to focus on, and hopefully it will improve the quality of my sleep. Number six, have a time limit on certain apps. 
So I'm going to have a one hour time limit for all my social media apps. So that includes YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, all the other ones like Twitter, um, Pinterest, um, all of those. Uh, so I can only use um, those apps for one hour a day and then they will be blocked for the rest of the day. And finally, um, delete apps that are really not doing anything for you, not serving any purpose. Just take that step and delete that app. Um, you know, for example, if Facebook isn't really related to your work and it doesn't do anything, it doesn't add any value to your life, then delete the app and just check on your computer or laptop maybe once every couple of days. Um, that way you won't have this urge to check it. So this is it, these are the steps that I'm taking. And I also want you guys to give this a shot if you suffer from the same things that I've gone through and um, hopefully see you on the other end with a much better version of myself.